Hello everyone. Sure. Welcome to yeah another episodes of Thoughts on Education, an initiative by College Dunya. Today, yeah, we have with us uh, Dr. S. C. Kamde, who is the principal for Hira Shudar Institute of Technology, Nidasoshi. Uh, I welcome you, sir, to give to highlight a few things about the speaker today. Uh, sir obtained his PhD from BTO and has also been a gold medalist and a university ranker itself. And he has also published many journals and theses throughout his journey. Sir has overall 30 years of experience in the education industry. And from 18 years, he has the experience of a professor and being principals and director at different engineering colleges. We welcome you, sir. Thank you. So, uh, shall we begin, sir? Shall we go ahead? Surely, surely. Please proceed. Right, sir. So, uh, my first question for you, sir. Uh, you have held various key positions at different education institutes throughout your career. What are the key factors that keep you connected with the education sector? Basically, it is a passion for education. Uh, I have been chosen this profession out of my own passion. The parameter which influenced me to come to education, particularly for teaching position, is the teachers who taught me engineering very effectively at my undergraduate level. Those were the role models for me to be in education sector. And since last 30 years, with the same zeal and drive, I have been pursuing this profession very honestly and dedicatedly. That's wonderful, sir. It's inspiring to see such people. Moving on, sir, my next question for you, uh, being the principal of Hira Sugar Institute of Technology, what is your philosophy of leadership and how would you describe your leadership style? Basically, the leadership method which I follow and practice is by front. Leadership by front. I should be a role model where others follow me. It is not just you know, a top, 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 top down approach. It is basically a bottom up approach where people from the bottommost position in the organization hierarchy must be able to observe me as their ideal and they must be followers. That is how I need to be a role model for others so that leadership by default, it happens from front. That is the ideology I have been practicing. Well said, sir. Well said. Next question, sir. The education system in India and other foreign countries are structured differently. We all are aware of that. In your experience, what can an inbound student gain from studying at Hirashugar? Yeah, it's a good question you have raised. Education sector, particularly in India, after the implementation or introduction of a national education policy, is going through phases of transition. Different universities, different institutions, the regulating authorities are giving timely guidelines for the implementation of the national education policy, but they are pursuing national education policy in their own perception. In a true sense, you can say intent and spirit, what the national education policy is expecting, that is aspirations of the NEP, we call it as. Uh, we were not able to reach still in spite of all these efforts. My perception is we must be able to meet the aspirations of NEP 2020 in a true sense. That is how the engineering, the, not only engineering, uh, education system in the country needs to be oriented. The very important uh, decisions recently UGC has released a curriculum framework for implementation of conventional education, particularly arts and science and other degree courses. Now, engineering and professional education needs to be prepared a framework in that direction. That is how the education has to be taken ahead. True, sir. That's true. So, how do you think uh, the curriculum of your college uh, will ensure that it follows the best practices in the industry? Very nice. Basically, my college, Hira Sugar Institute of Technology, is an affiliated college to Vishwishwara Technological University, Bragavi, 
Karnataka state. Though being an affiliated college, we have a limited freedom to change or modify the curriculum. But within the framework of the uh, curriculum that is prescribed by the university, we are delivering the best. Because what is spelled out in the curriculum may not be sufficient in the implementation phase. It's a creativity of the teacher, he, what he practices in the classroom. That's what I call it as classroom dynamics. That needs to be student-centric and teacher must be able to attract students, make the class live. That is how the Hiroshima Institute of Technology is now doing. And that happens only, I, I could say this with uh, you know, proudness or proud feeling that I take the first initiative, I take my all heads of the department, my colleague, uh, fellow staff members, and what, what we should do in the classroom and what we should not do in the classroom. Many times I do engage, otherwise normally the human tendency is finding a shortcut ways to implement it and get with little efforts or minimum efforts, what is maximum that could be delivered. But we don't do that. What we do is we interpret the syllabus that and that could meet the aspirations of the today's generation. That is how HSIT is different from any other institutions. True, sir. I'm sure every student who is studying out there, in fact, in, me myself, always have wanted a, a different approach towards how we are doing today's education. Uh, my next question for you, sir. You know, as the principal or as an individual, what do you think your roles and responsibilities are towards the university or towards the college? Certainly, leadership, particularly when you head the institution, being a principal or head of the institution, whether he's a director or a principal or a vice chancellor, whatever it is, he's a face of the index, sorry, face of the institution. So, uh, uh, my views, my perception of taking the education ahead will have a greater influence on the people who are associated with this institution. So therefore, I must be very cautious and should have, uh, a, you can say, uh, <clears throat> a sense of cautiousness at every point of time when I implement or make a changes, even a small changes in the, uh, the existing things. So we, we need to look at that students get benefit and students are delivered the employability skills. Parents must be happy. That is what we need to take together, the stakeholders and implement our policies. That is how one has to look his institutions. Right, sir. So uh, I think you have also answered my next question wherein I was about to ask that uh, what will be Hira Sugar's top priority over the next 10 years? Yeah, uh, in the last five years, what we planned it in five years, we could able to complete it in three years. Uh, the last five years plan was getting it accredited and preparing it for autonomy status and reaching a state of university. But we could achieve it uh, within three years only because of the our team and the support that our people have extended to me, particularly the teaching faculty. Uh, they have greatly extended their support without any uh, looking back. So the work that I could be able to achieve in five years, we could able to complete it in three years. Now it is all the programs of the colleges are accredited by National Board of Accreditation. In the first cycle itself, the college got A grade by NAC accreditation. We have to build up an ecosystem which could be a national level university which attracts talent across the country. That is my vision for this HSIT. Already the Prime Minister's office has recognized Hira Sugar Institute of Technology in PMSS scheme, that is Prime Minister's Special Scholarship Program for Jammu Kashmir uh, <coughs> students. And now uh, uh, I ask when I interact with the students from Jammu Kashmir who come down here for admissions, what they share is, sir, PMO office has listed top 100 colleges in the country and your college was also in the list. So we could able to get the seats. We have chosen this institution. So that is a great achievement, uh, what I feel. And uh, this is one thing. Second, 
again the prime minister's office has recognized our college for implementation of its flagship program unnat bharat abhiyan where the institution has adopted five villages around the institution uh, through the interventions of technology how we could improve the life standards or living standards of the villagers that is a program agenda that will be submitting proposal to government of india through our experts in the institutions and that is how i wish to take this institution to next level indeed sir we wish you all the very best in that sure sir sure. so uh, sir is there something you would like to tell about the university which generally the people do not know or not aware of about the university the college hirashi university aha uh-huh. acha most of the students what they don't know about my college is uh, where is this college because it is located in remote rural place most of the students will have the poor understanding or the misconception that it is a rural college means no facilities or it might be located in a corner of a uh, some remote area where there is no accessibility and students can't uh, enjoy the campus but it is not less than any uh, you can say uh, national institute of technologies because it is a 100 acres campus and all facilities 100% uh, in house staying facility for all teaching staff non teaching staff and even students they can stay so you can say it is a pure residential campus where students across from any corner can come and stay here this is one thing second thing is uh, most of the time uh, students will have uh, they don't know what they don't know about this institution is who runs this institution this institution is run by the a saint a great saint of this area sri uh, shivalingeshwar mahaswami ji purely on a charity basis it is a sri matha uh, like uh, a devotee temple like uh, in the south uh, what we call it as dharmasthala Uh, like like that it is one of the famous uh, temple in this com- uh, area so head of that is uh, mahaswami ji who is a great saint of this part so he runs the institution on purely charity basis that is a uh, very precious part most of the student and parents do not know about this outsider particularly i am talking rural people are well aware but people abroad sorry uh, you know other than karnataka state they might not be aware of these things so that is a greatest advantage right sir uh, i think uh, that particularly answers all the questions i had for you so uh, okay. lastly sir is there any advice or suggestions which you would want to give to the youth and the aspiring students certainly it's a very good question you have raised finally what i suggest my students particularly young generations is now with the commercialization education become the marketable commodity every parent and students looks education as a commodity which can be procured from market placement so education that is linked with the placement placement alone should not be the objective of the education education for students should be man making first and then employability employability is required i don't say that employment is not required but a holistic approach for students is very very essential before we ensure them placements you first make them good human being who can bother about their society their well being of the parents then give them a good placement then the very purpose of or objective of the education is served and my suggestion to all the students particularly the young generations is you choose such a institutions where a social wholly complete holistic approach is practiced in giving professional education not just simply connected with the placements right sir i hope uh, many of the students who are, will definitely be watching this will take inspiration from your words and uh, i would like to thank you very much sir for accepting our invite for this interview and uh, give some of your valuable time to share your insights about your college and the education sector in general sir thank you so much sir 
थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सर